Hi everybody, welcome back to the next in my series of uh, modding Daisy PC community servers for 2024. And in this one, actually, we're actually on the we're actually on my local server, so I can demo something. Something really cool. So if you look in the stamina bar in the bottom left hand corner, you'll see my character uh, is not using any stamina. They do use some when they start to jump. So although this is it's in infinite stamina. Um, with a caveat, and the caveat is jumping and climbing will get rid of stamina. Also, if I simply hit the M key on my keyboard without having the map in my hand and without owning the GPS or the campus, you can see that's my location. That little arrow is the direction I'm going in. And if we look in the bottom left corner, we can see the compass gives my heading, and also we've got the grid sector there, just as if I had all of those three things. So, in effect, what's happening is the server is ignoring the fact that I don't have a compass or GPS. Uh, oh, I do have a GPS. I do have a GPS, but it's not on, and I haven't even got it in my hands. And we can just press M. Also, we will have um, uh, build anywhere as well. So this is very useful if you, for example, want to build a base and you want to stack walls on top of each other. Because you'll know with vanilla base building, you can't stack walls. You kind of build a wall. Um, and you can't put another one on top of it. And the problem with that is people then can boost over, can't they, with vehicles and, and different things. So in this video, what we're going to be doing is I'm going to be showing you how to have infinite stamina. We're going to have the build anywhere. Um, and we're going to have the, the map marker as well. I think I think that's everything anyway. But before we get started, I'd like to remind everybody that this is a series of videos. So if you've come to this video randomly through a search and you're a beginner and you're thinking, oh, I would like to learn... How to mod a PC uh, Daisy community server. In the description below this video, you'll find a link to the playlist that has all of these videos, kind of in order. And also, what you'll see is a previous video and a next video, because I've tried to record them in a way where each video builds on the knowledge of the next, so you can work through them um, to get, you know, to, to ultimately where you'll have your own. Daisy community server where you'll have mods on it and you'll have boosted loot and you'll have increased stamina and all, all this stuff that you wanted to have on it. Now, the way that we change these things is we edit a file called cfggameplay.json. So in the description below this video, there's going to be even more links as there always is. One of them will be to the Daisy official Bohemian Interactive Wiki, which does go through and does kind of explain some of this stuff. Um, but it's a little bit complicated the way that they explain it. So don't worry, I'm going to go through it line by line. So first things first, let's head on over to our server. Um, and what we want to do is we want to head on over to the dashboard. I'm using Nitrado as an example. What we want to get to are the expert settings or the serverdz.config. So if you're running a dedicated box or you're doing this on your local server or you're with a server provider that gives you access, direct access to the serverdz.config, um, that's the file you're after, serverdz.config. On Nitrado, we have to enable expert settings and then you go into it. And then you stop the server because it won't allow you to make any changes to serverdz.config without the server being stopped. And you want to make sure that down at the bottom, you have enable CFG gameplay file equals one. So you'd make that change, you would save and restart. If these things that we are about to do don't work, always come and just check that enable CFG gameplay file equals one is set. Now, if you're on console, there is a link in the description below this video to the console uh, Daisy community server uh, updated for 2024 guide. But basically, it's in the settings on console on Nitrado. You'll see, you'll scroll down and they'll, uh, in your um, Nitrado uh, dashboard, it will say enable CFG gameplay. And you just say yes or one, and then that is enabled. So now we've got that enabled, we can jump on over to the file browser, and that will take us here. And we go into Daisy standalone, and then we'll go into the MP missions folder. Um, and then we're working on a Chernerus folder here. So we're going to click on Chernerus. If it was Livonia, we click on the Enoch one. And scroll down, and we're after cfggameplay.json. So there is cfggameplay.json. This is the important file. So what we're going to do, we're going to download this. And it's going to download to our local computer. So it's going to be in our download folder. And we're just going to create a new folder. A uh, new folder. We're just going to call it... Um, 
uh, GP gameplay settings and we're just going to copy that and we're going to go in here and we're going to paste it in so so we've got so this if you like this is kind of like our our vanilla file so if we open that with notepad plus plus we can look down now your one won't look exactly like this because I've already made some changes to this in fact we've made some changes already haven't we because in an earlier video we uploaded some files that gave us a custom loadout when we started off as well is there anything else that we've changed no so let's have a, before we do any changes let's just have a quick look through the file to get you familiar with with kind of the way it works um, now remember this is a .json it's not an uh, XML file um, and if we look through we can see at the top we have the base damage stuff and you can see what we have here which is a bit unusual is we have the modifiers that change whether something works or not is under false or true now if you watch some old videos where I've done vi tutorials about this it used to be zero or one so for example disable base damage is false so that means base damage isn't disabled so if you wanted that to be uh, if you wanted base damage to be disabled, you'd turn that to true. And then we have container damage. So this is, uh, do you want things like um, uh, barrels or tents or things that contain other things? Can they take damage as well? So you can turn that off as well. The only thing to watch out for, because sometimes you think, well, this is a no-brainer, isn't it, to, to disable base damage Well, and containment damage. But the problem is that then often will stop people doing um, raiding other people's bases, which is maybe what you'll want. Um, you don't want people being able to blow open doors and get inside people's bases but it also and this can be a problem if someone builds a base and gets it wrong they can't dismantle it as well by bashing it down so if you've ever built something like a um, a wall and you've built it the wrong way around in daisy and then you can't get to the side of the wall that enables you to just take out the nails and the planks and everything and you need to bash it down with a with an axe you can't if you've got base damage disabled so just bear these things as in mind um, we've got disabled personal light as well um, that overrides the setting in our server dz.config spawn gear, gear preset files we've talked about those in presets in a previous video and here we have our stamina data now don't worry about modifying any of these now we're going to be using a couple of different tools to do this for us um, and then we have down here we've got our min and maximum temperatures again we'll talk about them in a separate video and here we have base building as well so this is the thing that enables us to have a build anywhere setting and then if we come down here we have the stuff about whether you can access the map without having to have a tourist map a compass and a gps so we can turn all these to true so ignore map ownership true etc now what we can do though is we've got a couple of different ways of changing this well i guess we've got three we could do it manually if we understood what everything said did we could go through and change it manually however when you're starting off you might be a little bit nervous about that about changing everything manually so we've got daisy boosters that amazing website um, has a tool that can do it for us also i'll put a link to kind of a separate video that i've done which is well i guess it this is what we're doing here but what we'll also have is we'll have a link to a github repository that although it says daisy 1.20 um, the settings in it are applicable and in this what i do is i take specific stamina data and base building data and the map access data those little snippets of code those little bits and you can copy and paste those over your existing cfg gameplay uh, json and they will do those three things of having unlimited stamina build anywhere and the map access so yeah so you can do that um, so but in this video we're going to use the daisy boosters dot version so we're going to go to all generators and we're going to go to the gameplay generator like this and it's really simple it's really cool this you can just look through again it just reminds you to make sure that you've got enable cfg gameplay equals one in your server uh, dz.config file so let's say we wanted base damage disabled and container damage respawn dialogue this means that um when you're unconscious you can't die you know so if you want if you're in a server where you don't want people to be able to you know quit basically when they've been shot um you, you can disable that um player data 
unlimited stamina what we want disable personal light no move hit indicators no i quite like them movement data now i wouldn't mess around with movement data um some people don't like the kind of the impetus or the momentum that players have now but i think it's fine so i would leave that um, base building build anywhere now this is important garden plot will remain disabled what would happen is if you allow build anywhere with a garden plot um, what people can do is you can stack garden plots and it makes it very easy to, to raid bases so I keep that um, turned off map markers yeah we want that I think it's, it's a nice quality of life improvement is it just to be able to see where you are um, our world data so what we're going to do is it's Chernus map so we could change the temperatures but we're just going to go Chernus temps I guess you could put Namalsk on there if you wanted it really cold <laughs> no thanks that goes there so that we just got the vanilla temperatures there finalize download cfg gameplay.json so there we go so that we've now downloaded that let's find that in our download folder and let's just copy that and go into our gameplay settings folder so number for me anyway number seven is the original one from our server and number eight is the new one so let me just go into notepad plus plus and just close these down so we don't get confused um, there we go so these are the two files we got so in fact what we'll do is i'm just going to left click cfg gameplay 7 and i'm just going to change that to gameplay underscore original so that's our original one and then the new one I'm going to leave at CFG Gameplay 8. So we're going to open up the original one in Notepad++. And then we're going to open up the new one. So straight away. So if you look at the top of the existing one, uh, the, the original one, we can say with base damage, we've got false, 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 false. And then with CFG Gameplay, the new one that's been edited by that tool at Daisy Boosters, we've got true, 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 which is really good. And we can scroll down. And then you've got base building there trues and falses have been changed and then at the bottom you've got ignore map ownership true 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 which is good which is what we wanted however the thing to be careful about is you if you've made some changes already to your cfg gameplay.json file if you just upload them to the new one over the top of the one that's on your server you're going to lose those changes and the specific changes we've already made are the spawn gear preset files that you see here so we're going to remember to take these so spawn gear presets we're going to copy that from our original go over to cfg gameplay and underneath disable personal light we're going to put in a sp uh, space we're going to control v and we've spawned them in now is there anything else as well that is it so we can just save that so that's ready to go now so what we'll do now is i'm just going to change this one to just be CFG gameplay. Let's press enter. So that one is almost ready to be uploaded. But what's the final thing we should always do before we upload any files? We should always check whether it formats. So gone to JSON uh, validator. We can browse, downloads, where gameplay settings, CFG gameplay, open, process, valid. Uh, all right, a duplicate key name should be unique. Oh, what we got here? Code 23 construction. All oh, right, no, it's it's found an error, hasn't it? And it's corrected it for me. So let's go back and let's see what the error was. It was there, wasn't it? Ha well, there we go. There's an example. So what we've done here is, if we go back. So what happened was, it said it was valid, but it said, warning, you've, you've duplicate, duplicated a key. And because I've got fixed JSON ticked here, it fixed it for me. But what we're going to do, I've scrolled down and I can see, you know, it's highlighted the error. So we're just going to go back and we're just going to go back to this one. Um, and we're going to edit it. However, as we've changed the name of it, we need to open it up again. Uh, so let's edit with Notepad++. Plus. There we go. I should have spotted that straight away, shouldn't I? So we can see we've got a duplicate that. So we're just going to... Let's get rid of that let's save that let's go back to json format and validator uh, let's refresh that so it goes to zero let's browse cfg gameplay open process 
valid right and it hasn't had to do any fixes there we go a live error correction in the tutorial video but it shows you how easy it is you know and i've done this hundreds of times and yet i didn't see something completely obvious in front of me which was a duplicated line okay so now that's done and we've checked it we can now go back to our server scroll down to the bottom click on upload file go to our cfg gameplay open that let it upload and then restart the server and those changes will now take effect so when a player hits m um, they'll bring up the map even if they haven't got a map they can run around to the heart's content without using any stamina and they'll be able to build anywhere um, now if you want to do particular parts of those things i would recommend you go over to my github repository again the link is in the description below the video ignore the daisy 1.2 bit because this does work with 1.25 and copy and paste the specific parts that you want over the specific parts in your existing cfg gameplay.json uh, uh, make sure you validate it re-upload it and you could say for example just have unlimited stamina and not build anywhere or just have the map data one the map data one is one i really like on my servers i always tend to if they're a serious server they all, they, they don't get it but if it's a more fun server they'll get the map data one um and they tend to have base building data i don't always bother with stamp unlimited stamina because i don't think you really need it in in daisy um it just means that you can run away from zombies <laughs> but they still chase you don't they so there we go hopefully this has been useful if it has been hit like if you want to see more the same press subscribe and of course i'll see you again soon